Come on, I think it'd be appropriate if somebody would go ahead and let your praises ring right now. Come on, lift up your voice, all ye people, and somebody else shout unto God. say this, I want to thank everybody that showed up yesterday for outreach, uh, whether you were knocking doors or you stayed and hung out and prayed, what a blessing, or you prayed from your house, that's fine, um, we had a, a, a good time, uh, you know, we had a few that didn't want to fly, and uh, some of them just shut the door, said no thanks, didn't want to hear anything we had to say, but for the most part, I believe, uh, I, I speak for myself, we were very warmly received. All right. And, uh, we've got some people that have committed to coming to not just church, but also our family fiesta that's coming up next Saturday. I do want to ask you this. Let's pray for that. Uh, we've got a few flyers left back there in the back. If you've got some at home, please, please don't throw them away. Please don't let them collect dust on your countertop or in the window of your car. Give them away. Yeah. Uh, let's use them. Praise God. Uh, Praise God. And, and let's see what the Lord will do. Yeah. Uh, pray for our family day that's coming up next yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pray that the weather is just as, as nice as it was yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what it looks like out there, but earlier it was blue skies and it was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So let's pray that we have a nice, beautiful day and uh, going to have a good time. Looking forward to that. Just pray for that. Amen. Yeah. Um, continue to pray for Jackie Walker. Yeah, uh, yeah, good to see yeah. Sister Carney. Continue to pray for her yeah. children. Pray for Mike. Uh, Mike's got some health things, some tests that they're running on him. So right, right. I know he'd appreciate your prayers. Yeah, yeah. Praying for Monica. Pray for Richard. Um, good to see Danielle. Glad that he's home yeah. and in the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And that's the will of God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Continue praying for KG. Amen. And uh, just got a host of needs represented in the house. Uh, pray for Sister Donna. Uh, pray that God would uh, use her to be a miracle. Yes. Amen. Yes. And to be a witness. Yes. All things work for the good to yeah. them yeah. that love him. Love Amen. If you've got an urgent need, let's do something different. Let's start on this side today. All right, we'll do any other needs on this side, pray for Michael Smith, his moving situation, yeah. that God would open up the appropriate door that right. his will could All be right. done. All right. Anything over here? Okay. Pray for our family, Cadence. All right. Praying for promise. All right. We'll do. Any other needs in the house? All right. Yes, Harrison. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're praying for your family, praying Amen. for your mom and your dad. Amen. So good to see Sister Manuel, yes, Harrison, sir. and Junior, and uh, I don't know the names of your, your friends that are with you, but I want to get to know them. So uh, we're praying for all of you. Amen. Any other any other needs that we missed? All right, let's do what we do best. This is a house of prayer. Amen. Let's lift up our voice and let's take these needs to the Lord. God, we thank you so much. I'm so glad that Harrison and his family are here today. I pray you move on that prayer request. 
Touch his daddy, God. Touch his brothers, his family, God. I pray that you would bring revival to that family. I'm asking you, Lord, to show yourself strong. God, all of our families. You see Sister Carlos praying for her family, God. And Lord, you see KG, God. And we're so glad Danielle's here, God. I'm asking you to move on them and show yourself strong there. You see Cadence praying for her sister. Promise, God. Meet that need. I pray, God, that you touch Mike and his body right now, his mind. Lord, reach him. Save him. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. Brother Smith's moving situation. God, I pray for your will to be done. I'm asking you right now to touch uh, uh, Sister Donna Guyon, Lord. I pray, God, that you would minister to her. Let your healing virtue flow. God, touch Sister Marcy Sellers. Touch Jackie Walker, God. Touch uh, Summer Cardi, God. You see people that are already connected to this church. My mother and my grandmother, God. Whatever doth hinder there, I pray you move it out of the way. They've got to be saved. Give us revival, God. You see our efforts in outreach yesterday. You see our family day coming up Saturday. I pray for good weather. I pray, God, that you would allow us to have a harvest from the seed that we have sown. An abundant crop, a bumper crop, God. Seven years of plenty. Hallelujah. God, we've had enough famine in our lives. We've had enough of the withered and the maimed. God, it's time for plenty. It's time for great harvest, God. Prepare us for it, God. Prepare us, God, to be able to house the fruit that you want to give us, God. And let our fruit remain in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you be seated just for a moment. And we'll give you an opportunity to give. And then uh, directly following that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to get up and greet each other one more time. And as you do that, I'm going to ask Bishop to come. Amen. So I thank you for your giving, uh, your faithfulness to the house of God, to the kingdom of God. Uh, amen. Anybody, anybody like what you're feeling today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. Brother Smith, if you would stand and bless this offering for us. Jesus. Jesus. All right, you're welcome to come and give. And if you don't feel like making the trip, just hand. Uh, I'm sure one of these children would love to take your money. Amen. I'm sure one of these adults would like to take your money. Amen. But you know what? If they do that, Jesus is going to see it. And he's not going to like that very much because that's his money. Amen. Um, this Saturday is our family fiesta. And fiesta just means party. And so our families and our friends are going to get together and we are going to have a party. Amen. How many of you know that there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party? Amen. But this party is going to stop whenever you leave. But the Holy Ghost is going to move again on Sunday. And that's that's what this is all about. You know, we want a lot of people to show up Saturday. We want to represent. Uh, main thing is, you know, I want people driving down this road to see that there's something going on here. And some activity. That there's a church that's alive there. And, uh, and they're going to look out and they're going to see all you beautiful people and and they're yes, going to say, sir. man, yes, I want to go to church there. They're yes, actually sir. doing stuff. Yes. All these other churches, they shut the doors, Bishop. But they got a church there, and, and they're still they're still having church. And they're not afraid of no coronavirus. Amen. They're still letting God move. Amen. So we've got that coming up. Um, I'm going to ask all of our church families, I need you to bring two 12-packs of drinks. Uh, preferably Cokes or Sprites or Diet, whatever. Um, if you want to bring a 12-pack of soda and a 12-pack of water or whatever, that's fine. Bring a dessert, a uh, bunt cake, some cookies, whatever you prefer. And if you like something weird to go with your tacos, <laughs> like sour cream or cottage cheese or guacamole, some of that weird stuff, 
you know, if you like that, you better let us know. Because if we have, if we get together Saturday and we don't have your thing, then it's probably because you didn't let me know. Again, I want to say thank you to everybody that showed up yesterday, that you prayed for us. Uh, we had a good time. Um, I believe God's going to honor our efforts. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, look, I, I look throughout the congregation today, and I believe he already has. Amen. Amen. Uh, we sometimes, I, in my experience, I'm sorry for taking too long, Bishop. In my limited experience of doing outreach, uh, the majority of the time that I have seen God move, uh, we go to specific houses and we sow a seed, but but oftentimes God gives us a harvest where we didn't sow. Yeah, yeah, right. Amen. And, and you know what? I believe that uh, I believe that God's going to not only give us those where we did sow, but He's going to give us those that where we have not sown. So you keep reaching out. If you still got flowers left, I got a few back there. Uh, grab some. Use the ones you got at home. Let's continue to reach for our people. Again, the main thing is to show up. To love them and to get them back on right, Sunday. Right, right, right. Amen. Uh, you never know. We may have evangel an evangelist preaching for us next Sunday. Never know. Amen. Amen. I was I was talking to Brother Smith on the way here, and I was telling him, I said, "Man, I got all these ideas that I wanted to do, yeah. uh, but I didn't think about them until it was too late. So next time, I got these ideas that I, I want to do, and I said, I said we're going to do this, this, and this." And then uh, I'm going to call Bishop up and I'm going to say, look, we need evangelist Tim Merritt oh. to come and preach for us Sunday. Busy <laughs> schedule. Amen. It's hard to get him up now. <laughs> Praise God. He is open and available. Amen. And I love him so much. I, hey, I don't know about you, but I feel an excitement in the air, in the atmosphere. God's moving. God's working. Some of your family is going to be the result of the seed that we've been sowing. Amen. The praise and the worship, the word of God that's been going forth there. I'm telling you, it's coming back. It's coming back. Amen. I love my pastor, my bishop, my man of God. The only pastor I've ever, I've ever had. And I'm not looking for another one. Praise God. And I love Sister Merritt, such a, a great lady of God. Amen. I appreciate yeah. her and, and their, their stand for truth. Amen. Uh, why don't we lift our hands? Hallelujah. And let's worship him. Our pastor's going to come and, and he's going to greet us or preach to us or whatever he wants to do. But here's what I want to do. I want us, I want us to lift our hands up high and let's lift up our voice and let's ask God to, to speak to us today, to minister to us, to challenge us in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, let's clap our hands up to the Lord as we serve Good to have our truth warriors here from Gina, also from uh, Pineville. God bless our families. We love them very much. God is great. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says he is greatly to be praised. He is so great that there's no imagination. There's no way we can even give him the praise that he deserves. But we give him great praise because he is a great God. So very, very good. Hey, just a few things that are coming up. Just kind of give you a heads up. Uh, we'll have Brother Larry Booker on July the 4th. Looking forward to that. Yeah. One of the greatest preachers in Pentecost. Yes. I want to say it's so good to meet Brother Larry all the way from, from that chair. Yeah. God, good to have Daniel home. Now, yes, sir. Love you. We pray for him. And good to see Sister Regina and the boys. Yes, yeah. sir. We love her very, very much. Been praying for her. And good to, super good to see her. Praise yeah, God. Amen. So. How many of you have ever had a situation you felt like was burying you? Just covering you up. Just yeah. working you over. Yeah, yeah, come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Some that you felt like couldn't even dig your way out. Right. But the truth is, when something looks like it's going to bury, when the devil says, I'm going to bury her, I'm going to bury him. They don't realize that we're the seed. Oh my, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. He, he thinks he's going to cover us. Yeah. 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 But he's given us a chance to grow. Uh -huh. He thinks he's going to put us under. 
But the situation is designed to bear fruit. And not just a little bit of fruit, much fruit. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. So everything that you're dealing with, everything that you're going through, all the struggles and the toil, and, and Sister Regina and, and some of you good folks that have been here for the long haul can look around on the inside. we got some things that are going to happen. Not bathroom, Sister. I mean, not you. Hang on, hold on. Hang on. Praise the Lord. We're going to put a little sticker on the door that says Eileen's bathroom. <laughs> but uh, signage and perhaps some uh, some paint and a little upgrade on the outside, working on the parking lot, just doing a few things. Yeah. What we have done here is my, and this is what I did at the other church, Brother Ed and our folks that are here would know the same thing, is the tabernacle was beautiful on the inside. Right. That's right. On the inside. Right. It was plain on the outside. On the outside. Yeah. A child of God is designed to tabernacle the presence of God. Right. Yeah. Right. We are designed to have our beauty right. in right. Yes. and plainness to the world outward. Right. The reason they know the presence of God is dwelling there is how we radiate what's on the inside. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Not how we show off. Right. Not how fancy you dress or don't dress. That's right. That's right. Not not how many bangles you can hang on you. Right. But the glory is on the inside yes. and it manifests yes. itself on the outside. Yes. Right. How many of you Holy Ghost people will know this? You see somebody that's re recently received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And they radiate. Yeah. 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 There is a clean glow yes. about them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, Michael, I tried to cover it up. Because I didn't want people to know that I was hanging out with the Holy Rollers. The crazy people, that's right. So the, the night after, I, I got the Holy Ghost on a Sunday night. I was baptized on a Sunday night. Brother Bobby, I went to church and got the Holy Ghost. The real thing. The next morning, I didn't want a cigarette. I went to the courthouse because I had I had I had court I had I had testified so I had a subpoena and I went to the courthouse I was pleased with it. I got to the courthouse. I'm sitting quiet. I feel good. I feel clean. Mm -hmm. I felt I felt God. Mm -hmm. And all old buddies that were talking and carrying on and joking. They didn't, nobody noticed I wasn't joking. Right. Nobody noticed I wasn't saying anything back. I wasn't cussing. Come on now. Nobody noticed. I'm just sitting over there, me and JC. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and here comes the judge, Judge Woody Thompson. And he walked in and he always wore his black frock. I guess that's what they call it, his judge robe. And when he'd walk, he'd swing his hands so he'd make his robe dance. <laughs> here he comes. And he come in there greeting everybody. He says, men, men, good morning, men. And then he looked over at me, he says, Timbo. I said, morning, judge. He says, I heard, uh -huh. I heard Just like that. that you were at the Pentecostal church last night. And all my buddies, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Gossip. Gossip. <laughs> he says, is that true? I said, yes, sir. And all my buddies were going. He says, I heard tell they baptized you in Jesus' name last night at that Pentecostal church. Is that true? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, I heard that you go and got that Holy Ghost at that Pentecostal church. And I thought, how does the judge know all that? Yeah, come on. And all my friends were looking at me like, are you kidding? Are you a holy roller? Are you one of them crazy apostolics? <laughs> them Pentecostal people? And I said, it's true. Then, of course, my friends started saying, oh, that's the crazy church. You, you know what? We are crazy. Yes. We're crazy about Jesus. Yes. He has been so good to us. Yes. Listen to me. You keep having church. You keep doing what's right. You keep the spirit of God on the inside and it's going to pour out on the outside. And this building will be full to overflow and somebody ought to shout hallelujah. We've got plenty more chairs than this. 
God. He's got more room than this. We can put 150 people in this building because it's happened before. We ought to get up and give God a high praise and say, Lord, we need Jesus on the inside so the glory can pour out on the outside. Somebody say amen. So looking forward to Taco Saturday. Yes to Saturday. Praise God. It should be a good time in the Lord. Remember Larry Booker, July 4th. Uh, we've got a missionary from Central America is going to be with us in May. And just good things happen. Let me give you an update about Sister Donna. Y'all just remain standing. Brother Wagner's about to preach. One thing that uh, I appreciate is Sister Donna uh, was having some blood pressure issues. She has a micro spot on her brain where she has suffered a stroke sometime. Where they can tell you they're not sure when it was. It may have been this time, but and they're, and they're seeing if it's moving or anything is happening to that. But so far, she's going to be fine. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know what I believe? I believe it's the prayers of God. Oh, yeah, I believe Somebody ought to say amen. amen. God is faithful. He hears us. Amen. And Sister Donna is a precious lady. Yeah. With Sister Guyon has been with us now for 16 years or so. And uh, I came because Sister Merritt was teaching holiness. That's right. Amen. And that's how they showed up in church. They wanted to hear about holiness. Yes. And when they heard about it, they said, I want to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to live that. I appreciate that. <laughs> She's going to be fine. We're waiting on maybe a heart calf on Tuesday. Yes. And you know what I'm expecting? A good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I appreciate your prayers very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate your stance for truth. We don't need another Run of the mill church. That's right. That's right. Now somebody got angry the other day because they came to our Pineville church, and uh, and I made some comments about where I came from, the denomination I came from, and they didn't like that. They said, "Well, I don't think you should be talking about another." Let me just say something. Those people are salesmen. Come on, come on. The lady that was complaining is a salesman. If what she sells isn't the best, I don't want to buy what she has. That's right. That's right. You hear me? What we have is the best. The best. You hear me? It's the best. Yeah. This is the best life. This is the only life. Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah. Praise God. God does mighty good things for us. And he's done great things for our people that are here. Praise the Lord. Brother Wagner, we love you very, very much. We want him to come and truthfully want you to preach the word. scripture when, when he was speaking about us being the seed the word of the Lord tells us except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but it goes on to say but if it die it will bring forth much fruit Amen. sometimes we've got to experience undesirable circumstances amen but all things work for the good amen your children their salvation, your family. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to say how delighted I am to have my friend, Mr. Larry Jackson, yeah. all the way from Natchez. Thank you for making the trip. Good to see Sister Regina and these boys. We're so glad to have them home. Yeah. Amen. You're home. <laughs> Amen. It's where, it's where home is. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. No, no place better. I'm glad that they're here. I've been thinking about these boys, and every time I drive by their place down the road, I, uh, I, I guess they're still there. I'm not sure. Okay. But every time I've been driving by, I look, hoping that they're outside somewhere so I can go talk to them and do what I can to get them in Sunday school yeah. or whatever. We want them here. Yes. Amen. They belong here. Yes. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're glad that Danielle is home and... Uh, yeah. Just glad all of you were here today. Praise God. Yes, Praise God. Amen. You know what? I'm glad to have some of my favorite people in the whole wide world that came to church today. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm also glad that some of you from Pineville showed up. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say that because uh, our Truthway Church here at Midway, some of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Amen. 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 But you Pineville folks, y'all run a close second. Very close second. We don't mind. We don't mind. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, 
look, I don't want it. I don't want nobody to hang your head and say, again. I don't want nobody to sigh. I want you with a smile on your yes, face yes, to do. turn to Acts chapter number two. I told y'all the story. I said I was at that youth rally. And the evangelist at that service asked us to turn to Acts chapter number two. And there was a collective, uh, again, that's our candy stick. That's who we are. Yes. And I'm going to talk a little bit about yeah. it today. Amen. Without shame. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter number two. Again, I want to say that I appreciate my pastor. Give him honor today. Amen. Acts chapter 2, a couple of verses of scripture. I want to begin reading in verse number 1. You yeah, have it say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, right, right, right. they were all with oh, one accord yeah. in one place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house yeah. where they were sitting. Right. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, right. and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right. All right, all right. Kind of wrestled with a title for today, uh, nothing mind-blowing. Uh, I'm going to just be a simple message today, but I feel like it's going to be a simple message from the Lord. I want to talk to you about the Pentecostal experience, this Pentecostal experience. One more time, let's lift our hands, lift our voices. God, I, I need your help today. I recognize, God, that I am just a man, and God, I fail and I fall short in so many ways, but God, I'm a vessel that you can use today. God, we need your anointing in this place. And these sweet saints of God, they need the word of God to minister to them, God. We want to be perfected. We want to be edified. We want to be filled with your spirit, God, and be in the will of God. And I'm asking you, God, today that you would help me to minister the word of the Lord. And I pray that the saints would respond to it and they would be challenged. By your word. And I pray this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Why don't we clap our hands one more time? Amen. All right, look up here and smile. Amen. Show me your teeth. Now, if my grandmother was here, I wouldn't be able to say that because she would spit her dentures out and she would. But you, you can show me your teeth. Amen. You look beautiful when you smile. You know, some, some Pentecostals, I don't know why their the corners of their mouth sag so bad. I don't know what it is, but hopefully we'll get to that today. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But I want you to get out of your seat, and I want you to go and greet somebody in the name of Jesus. Shake several people by the hand and ask them, have you had this Pentecostal experience? You know what? See how long it lasts. I love you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love you too, man. Praise God. I told you I'm going to join my church. I told you I'm going to join my church. I told you I'm going to join my church. Let me show you a picture of my We. I had it when I was four. We caught some slabs. We had 140. Really? One day. <laughs> yeah, we got here. 
We've been. Uh, we caught a monster. Nice Y'all have been there. Uh, River down there. Bum, 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 bum. Praise the Lord. Bum, 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 bum. Somebody say praise the Lord one more time. Hey, I think maybe a better question would have been to ask them, have you had this experience lately? When's the last time you prayed through? How many of you know the Holy Ghost? There's some evidence that comes with the Holy Ghost. And I'm not just talking about talking in tongues. I'm telling you, it's going to show up on your face. It's going to show up in, in your communication. It's going to show up in, on the inside and on the other. There's going to be some evidence that you got the Holy Ghost. And the first thing is, you're going to speak with tongues. Hey, you still believe that? Well, look at your neighbor and ask him, when's the last time you talked in tongues? Feel a little aggravating the spirit in here. Man, one of them one of them uh, scabs or something, you know. We just gonna scratch it until it bleeds. Praise God. Uh, I want you to consider the disciples prior to Pentecost. Uh, just following the crucifixion, these men, these disciples, they had left everything to follow Jesus. And, and they had invested their entire lives into this man that, that they had thought was the Messiah. And, and, and lo and behold, he ends up getting arrested and he ends up getting beaten and he ends up getting crucified. And, and you, you read the scripture and... Uh, you know, I see a bunch of men that, that invested everything and now they're hopeless and, and they run uh, afraid and they're scattered and they're discouraged and no, no doubt they got questions and, and some of them, we, we still refer to them 2,000 years later as doubting All right. Thomas. All right. Amen. They are a bunch of defeated men and women that have locked themselves in rooms behind doors trying to hide and, and they don't have any money and they don't have any social status and they didn't have big fancy church buildings and they were uneducated men and they didn't have anything that they could really call their own. I mean, these are men that left their occupations and, and in many cases they left their, their loved ones and their families to travel with Jesus. And now Jesus was gone. Be it his crucifixion or be it the day that he stood there on the mountain and we see him ascending up into heaven. And I can just imagine these men just kind of wringing their hands, thinking to themselves, what do I do now? What am I supposed to do with my life now? Well, I've got good news because something began to happen. Something took place. And in spite of all of the enemies that had these men running and hiding, I, I read the rest of the book and these men ended up turning their world upside down. And so the question that I want to pose to you today is how did they do it? How did they do it. What took a bunch of whipped disciples, scared disciples, men that were running from, uh, from the enemy, running for their lives, thinking that they would be next? What took those men and transformed them into the heroes of the New Testament? I mean, we call ourselves apostolic. Because we follow the pattern of the apostles. We, we follow the model that they set for us. Yes. What, what was it that turned everything around for them? Right. That, that took a bunch of scaredy cats 
and turn them into powerful, impacting men and women. Uh, and I'll tell you, the answer is real simple today. It was Pentecost. It was a Holy Ghost experience that took a bunch of men and women that were running for their lives, thinking they were going to be next to be crucified, and made them world changers. Somebody say amen. Amen. Something about Pentecost. Something about that Holy Ghost experience that transformed their lives. I mean, they, they watched Jesus ascend up into the heavens. And they're thinking, oh great, what do we do now? But something happened at Pentecost. They got a revelation that he's not just going to be with us. But now he's going to be in us. I'm talking about that Christ in them experience that changed them as individuals. But changed them forever as a church. Somebody say amen. Talking about this Pentecostal experience today. And you know, you forgive me because it's just going to be so super simple. I want to I want to talk to you about what Pentecostal uh, the Pentecostal experience uh, did for them. And I've got just a few points, but but as I preach this, as I as I teach and minister to you today, I want you to examine yourselves. Question yourselves, is that me? Because if it's not Maybe you need to question your experience oh, my God. because there's going to be some evidence. If you've got the Holy Ghost, there's going to be some evidence in your walk with God. And you know what? Speaking in tongues goes without saying. We're a Pentecostal church. When you get the Holy Ghost, these signs are going to follow them that believe. They shall speak with tongues. Hallelujah. The initial evidence. The initial fruit. But I want to talk to you about several things uh, that this Pentecostal experience uh, did for the early church. And I'm going to try to move through them quickly. The first Pentecostal, the first thing the Pentecostal experience did for the early church uh, was it fused them together. It bonded the early church together and it actually formed the church. It, it made the church a brotherhood of sorts. People that come together, that loved one another, that cared one for another. You see, before Pentecost, the disciples were divided. They were fussing over who was going to be the greatest among them, who was going to get to sit next to Jesus. But something happened. Happened when Pentecost and that Holy Ghost experience fell on them. Can I tell you the Holy Ghost will bring people together regardless of the shade color of your skin, regardless of the language you speak, regardless of what side of town you live on. Pentecost brings people together. This Pentecostal experience. It's really just an amalgamation of people of all walks of life. You can have a doctor on one side of the church while you've got somebody that's experiencing disease and sickness on the other side. Pentecost brings the educated and the uneducated together. It brings the wealthy together with the poor. But let me tell you something. It's not Pentecost if they don't have love one to another. psalm that says uh, it's good and it's pleasant for brethren to dwell in unity yes. together yeah. he goes on to talk about how that ointment that oil that anointing flows from the head of Aaron down his face onto his garment he said it's like that anointing he said it's like the dew that falls down on Mount Hermon and it begins to flow you want to know a surefire way to get the anointing to flow in the house of God when brethren, when sistren are dwelling together in unity, when we're all on the same page, when we're all in agreement, when we're all with one accord and in one place and we're not fussing one with another. There's no division in the church. God said, I hate that. That's a work of the flesh. Division. 
It's an abomination, he said. Those that cause discord. I'm telling you, this Pentecostal experience is going to bring all types of people yeah. together. They're going to walk through those back doors. They're going to have tattoos running all down their neck. But bless God, when they get this Pentecostal experience, they're going to love you. And we're going to love them. Hallelujah. why he said when two or three are gathered That's right. together hallelujah. hallelujah in his name I don't know about you but I showed up today in the name of Jesus and all I need is at least one more maybe two more that's here in the name of Jesus and we can have a move of God the anointing will begin to flow but we gotta show up together caused us to sit together in heavenly places. I'm talking about unity in the body of Christ. I'm talking about how the Holy Ghost will bring us together. I've already got a little bit ahead of myself and quoted the scripture, but it says this, but this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. That's how the world is going to recognize the church. That's how the world is going to know that we're the church of Jesus Christ when we have love one to another. I know that old song says, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. But if you'll pardon me and let me change it and tweak it just a little bit, it says this, that Holy Ghost I got, it makes me want to love everybody. I said the Holy Holy Ghost will make you want to love everybody. Not just people that live on your block. Not just people that share the same last name as you. Not just people. See the world, they're looking for people. Hallelujah. They can do something for them. People that got a little bit of possession, some material possession. Hallelujah. They're looking to drop names so that it boosts their credibility. The only name I've got that's going to boost anything is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost, this Pentecostal experience, make you want to love everybody. Amen. I thought this was pretty interesting. I read this uh, in early early first century church era theologian at least they called him a theologian he was quoting a pagan a pagan listen to what the pagan said about the church and I'm just going to paraphrase it look how these Christians love each other and then he went on to qualify it by saying and we pagans hate each other he goes on to say look how these these Christians are so ready to die for each other. But yet we pagans are readier to kill one another. And the early church had a revelation that pagans want to be loved also. And they're quicker to come into the church when they see a church that is willing to love them and care for them and pray for them. Hallelujah. The church at Philadelphia. John wrote a letter to him in Revelation chapter 3. And I'm fixed, I'm going to move from this real quickly into my next point. But the Bible says John wrote to them, and Jesus told them, You've got an open door. There's an open door to you, church. And I find it real interesting that Philadelphia just simply means brotherly love. That the church that's got love for people, hallelujah, God is going to give them an open door to evangelism, to soul winning, to reaching and turning their community upside down. You got to love one another. Hallelujah. This Pentecostal experience made the early church 
aggressive. Yes. Hallelujah. You couldn't shut them up. Bless God. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter number 3, Peter and John were on their way to the temple at the hour of prayer. And you know the story. They took that lame man by the hand. They raised him up. All of a sudden, a crowd begins to gather. They get themselves in trouble. And before it's all said and done, those rulers, the authorities, were commanding them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John just said, hey, look, we're going to obey God rather than men. And we're going to talk about those things that we have seen and that we have heard. Hallelujah. And they go away and they pray for boldness. And then in the very next chapter, guess what? They get arrested again. For the same thing. And all of a sudden those rulers come to them again. And they begin to rebuke them for their disobedience. Listen to what they said. They said, did we not straightway command you that you should not teach in the name of Jesus? Come on, come on. Yeah. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem right, with your doctrine. With your doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You have this Pentecostal experience and all of a sudden you're going to become a threat to the devil and his kingdom. You can't shut somebody up that's got this Holy Ghost. Bless God, they were aggressive. They weren't willing to shut up. They were so excited about what Jesus had done for them. Hallelujah. Nobody was going to pass them by without them sharing their experience with them. They had turned their world upside down. All of Jerusalem was filled with their doctrine. They were loud and they were proud about having this Holy Ghost. Unashamed and unafraid to share their experience. I don't know what's gotten into this modern Pentecostal church and why we're so timid and we're so afraid to share our testimony with people today. Talk about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We hear words like evangelism, outreach, Bible studies. Come on. You get afraid. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, evangelism, that's what that's what the, the preacher does when we're in revival. No. Evangelism is everybody's job. It's not just to the few. The select. It's not just to uh, Sister Carlos when she's on her job. It's not just uh, Brother Michael Smith's job to invite people to church. It's for everybody. If you've got the Holy Ghost, God is giving. You couldn't shut them up. They were telling everybody. But here we are. We get so nervous. We're so scared somebody's going to slam the door in our face. We're so scared they're going to pick up our little flyer and tear it up and tell us they're, that they're not interested. But bless God, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and how he delivered me from dope and he delivered me from the bars and he brought me out and he put my feet on the rock. I guess you don't feel that way. I guess you're so far removed from the bar stool and the medicine cabinet that you don't get excited about what God's done for you. This Pentecostal brother Randall will make you aggressive and at least you're telling somebody that they need to be saved or they're going to go to hell. Truthway, 
You show me a church that has lost their passion for evangelism. That they've lost their fervor for lost souls. And I'll show you a church that's dying if they're not already dead. Hallelujah. We can't ever stop reaching for our family. Don't you ever stop praying for your children. Don't you, Sister Party, don't you ever give up on them. I don't, I don't care how far gone they are or what they call them. This Holy Ghost experience gave the early church confidence, unbelievable confidence in spite of all the difficulty that they had to go through in spite of the opposition let me tell you something they experienced persecution unlike anything we've ever seen but if we don't lift up our voices and pray it's coming to America but bless God when you've got the Holy Ghost the way they got the Holy Ghost you're going to have confidence you're not going to be afraid of persecution. You're not going to be afraid of nothing. Even death. They weren't afraid of death. They were brought out into the town square. And they were stoned. They were publicly whipped. And they got up from that and they walked away. Counting themselves worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. They were confident. They were cast into prison. And what they do? They lifted up their voice loud and proud. They prayed and they sang praises unto God. Until those prison doors blew off. Until... Until that prison guard and his entire family were soaking wet in the name of Jesus. They were confident because they had a Pentecostal experience. They had a revelation that to die is gain. How are you going to threaten me with heaven? To die is gain. You know the Apostle Paul and all his perils, all the opposition that he faced, and he shouted it out, being confident of this very thing, that if God began to do a good work in me, he's going to finish it, he's going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I've been praying this scripture, I love it, it speaks to me. The Bible says if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart, and he knows everything. Everything. But if your heart condemn you not, then have you confidence with God. You want to know how you get confidence with God? You just live right. You do right. You do what the man of God says to do. But if you're sneaking around and you're hiding and you're doing things that you know the bishop and this man of God preach against, then you're not going to have any confidence at all. But if you experience Pentecost all over again, you run to an altar and you pray through one more time, you talk in tongues until you get the Holy Ghost all over again, you'll begin to build that confidence back up. You'll begin to stand in the face of opposition and say, if Jesus did it for me, he can do it for anybody else. A Holy Ghost church. A Holy Ghost saint is a confident saint. Yes, knowing that if God did it back then, yes, if God did it for Paul, if God could do it for a denier like Peter, God can do it for me. Somebody say amen. I said if God can do it for a Tim Merritt, God can do it for a Josh Wagner. If God could do it for an Eileen Millsap, God can do it for anybody. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Hallelujah. But if you're living right and you're doing right, you're going to have the confidence to march right on up into that throne room with boldness and say, God, my children are a mess. They're not living right. I trained them up in the way. Hallelujah. You'll have the confidence 
and the boldness of a lamb. And if you don't, you just need to pray through again. Why don't we all stand? Good preaching, good preaching. Hallelujah. Ah, you know what? Sit back down. Hallelujah. Church. Amen. Yeah. Said this Pentecostal experience, hallelujah, will make the church a powerful church. It was this kind of experience, hallelujah, it was a powerful church that put idol makers out of business in the book of Acts. It was this powerful kind of church that emptied out pagan temples. Does anybody believe that these signs still follow them that believe that they'll be able to cast out devils in the name of Jesus, that they'll be able to lay hands on the sick? I said, is this a powerful church? telling you folks I believe Truthway Church at Midway Truthway Church at Pineville I believe we've got the power to shut down the liquor stores I believe we've got the power to shut down the godless casinos I believe we've got the power to shut down the adult film industry if we'll lift up our voice if we'll get the Holy Ghost all over again we'll be a powerful church face of opposition they had a revelation no weapon formed hallelujah hallelujah it didn't matter if it was Egypt and Pharaoh Hallelujah. Just like the New Testament church, the more they were afflicted, the more they grew and they were multiplied because they were a powerful people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they had experienced Pentecost. Let's all stand. They had experienced the promise of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you shall receive power. Yeah, yeah. After that, you receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it's a Hallelujah. Does anybody in here have power? Yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you something, Truthway. We are miles ahead, infinitely ahead of the early church. We've got more numbers than they, they had. We've got more resources that they had. Look, we've got beautiful church buildings. We've got fellowship halls. We've got fancy musical instruments with anointed playing and anointed singing. We've got everything we need. We got wealth. Yep. You got 401ks. Yep. The church can't say silver and gold have we none because you got it. The church can't say that we're ignorant and unlearned. That's right. We've got doctors that are preachers. We've got trained teachers. Somebody say amen. Yeah. We've got Pentecostal churches on every corner. Some of them are large and influ uh, influential, but sadly, most of them have little to no power. We got sick people sitting on our church pews. But yet we say we're the people of God and we have faith. We've got people on our church pews that need the Holy Ghost. Brother Bobby, you've been coming for almost a year. A year now. It's time. Somebody say amen. Amen. It all, that's not how the church operates. Yeah. Praise God. On the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, when Peter began to preach that oh so important message, the Bible says the word of God went forth yeah. and they were pricked in their hearts. Yeah. There ought to be something about this kind of preaching that will stir up something on the inside of you that will make you say, what do I got to do? Hallelujah. The message doesn't change in a Pentecostal ch uh, church. The message is still the same. You got to repent and you got to be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall. I said you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to everybody. 
everybody in Florida. It doesn't matter if they live in Texas. It doesn't matter if they live on the other side of town. It doesn't matter if they're in another country. When they live out of state. And all of a sudden, God begin to deal with them. You may not know it's God, but it's God dealing with you saying, hey, it's time to get back home because God's got a promise for you, man. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God wants to begin to work in your life. He wants to give you power. He wants to give you confidence. He wants you to be a witness. God wants you to love everybody. And if you want that in your life, you run to this altar. You begin to repent of your sins. You pray, God, I need your help. God, I'm weak. God, I'm weak in this flesh. I've been doing things that I'm ashamed of. I don't have any confidence. I'm under condemnation because I've been sneaking around doing things that I know pastors been preaching against. But today, I'm going to get it right with God. Today, I'm going to get deliverance. Today, I'm going to get power. Today, everything changes.
tried to text you a couple weeks ago to try to see if we couldn't get a hold of these boys because we want them in church. If they're living here, we want them here. Amen. We want them in church. Amen. And Mindy too. Amen. Praise God. Anybody thankful for the Holy Ghost? Yeah. I'm telling you folks, I was a mess. I was a wreck. Some of you... you Probably a lot worse off than me. What a mess. You know, I mean, I would have called myself a Christian. It wasn't like I was an agnostic or an atheist or nothing. I believed in God. Nice. Believe Jesus was God. I never heard of a trinity or knew anything other than that. Nice. Hallelujah. What a mess. But something happened to me, Sister Eileen, when I got the Holy Ghost. You know what? I had been to other churches. And, and you know what? I enjoyed the preaching. I enjoyed the word of God. And when they gave that invitation at the end of the service for the sinners to come and quote the sinner's prayer, guess what? 
I went. And I repeated the prayer. And I got good feelings all over me. But I walked out still addicted to cigarettes. Still putting skull in my mouth. Still smoking pot. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But, hey, that's not all of it. That's like past, that's like Bishop preached that message about the uh, Israelite going over Jordan, and they took twelve stones, put them on the on the bank for everybody to see. But there were twelve more that were hidden under the water. Nobody ever saw saw them. Look, there's a lot of stuff I'll never tell you. It's buried. It's hidden. I'll never share that with you, Sister Carney. You don't need to know that. You'll never know that was there. Praise God. But there's some stuff I'll share with you. Praise God. Is that all right? Yeah, no, no, that's right. That's right. It's a good message, Pastor. I remember that. I've used it more than once. Amen. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. It made the difference in my life. I appreciate God. You know, it's like I told you the other night to connect the dots in my life. You know, you, you run that line from one dot to the next. And at the end of it all, it's got a beautiful picture, yeah, right? Yeah. I appreciate every time I, I got an opportunity to repent and say a sinner's prayer. Yeah. But you know what? When I got the Holy Ghost, it changed. Yeah. Christ in me, the hope of glory. It was more than just a goosebump. It was more than just a thrill that went up my arm. Hallelujah. I got him on the inside. And if you've got them on the inside, there's going to be some evidence. Evidence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's on the inside is going to come out. It's going to show up. Amen. All right, let's lift our hands one more time. We got another service. Hallelujah. One more service over in Pineville. I love you, Jesus. I appreciate you for the good word of God today. I thank you so much for all of our guests that are here. I thank you, God, for those that uh, have come back home, Lord. I pray, God, that you would bless them and fill them and use them and help every one of us, God, to express and show the evidence that you have put your spirit on the inside of us, God. Help us to win souls. To be unashamed and unafraid about what you've given us and help us, God, to lead others to the same experience. Bless our family fiesta that's coming up this weekend. We ask you, God, to let it bear fruit. Let us bear fruit and let our fruit remain. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Y'all be sure to greet our guests. We thank you. Uh, Mr. Larry Jackson for making the trip all the way from Ashes. They say a church alive worth the drive. All right, y'all greet each other in Jesus' name. Y'all know that Sister Regina know how glad we are to have her. Hopefully she'll feel the Holy Ghost and move back home to it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord.